The Telegraph Cycling Podcast. Interviews and analysis, we've got the big talking points covered. Hello, my name is Richard Moore. Uh, this is a mini version of the Telegraph Cycling Podcast. I'm at the Beck Hill Climb in Surrey uh, for David Miller's final race as a professional bike rider. He's one of 150 starters on this uh, brutal little 700 yard, uh, very steep climb. And I, I was just going to wander around with my microphone and see who I bumped into. The first person I found was Gary Beckett, the organizer of the Beck Hill Climb. This is his last ever race of an illustrious career. Come on, Dave. Can he set the record? Can he win the event? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut up, you're going to make the noise, it's David Miller! So, I'm with Gary Beckett, the organiser of the Beck Hill Climb. Gary, as well as being the order, organiser of this event, you're swan your Garmin Sharp. Oh, yeah. is, is that how you managed to persuade David Miller to take part? How did that come about? Well, this way, this way. It put me in a, a close contact uh, situation with him. But no, it, it first started... I mean, I've pestered the life out of everyone for years to, to get... But he came as a guest to our annual luncheon uh, to present prizes and things like that a couple of years back. And out of his, his own, he wasn't promised. I didn't kick him under the table or anything. But I think maybe the red wine prompted him. He stood up and he said to the Beck CC, I've heard about your hill climb so much that in my retirement year I will ride it. And then uh, recently we were working in the Vuelta. I was looking after Dave there and uh, he was pretty pleased because Browser had just asked him to ride for Great Britain. He said, well, a great way to finish my career at the World Championships. And I seized my opportunity with both hands. I went, you said the hill climb. And he went, what? I said, the hill climb's after the world. And he went, ah, oh, yeah. So uh, I said, look, this is the way I see it, Dave. And these are the words that sold it to him. It closes the circle, meaning you start as a club man, you go and win all your jerseys at the big races, and you finish at a club event where most British riders start at club events. And he said, I like that. I said, it's like the wheel. And Dave said, that does it for me, Rick Gazza, I'm riding. And so from then, uh, we took it on from that. And, uh, here we are. Well, here we are, and it's, it's absolutely crazy. It is. I mean, this is the 59th running of this event, the 29th that you've organised. Yes. So a big anniversary next year. But is this, the, is this the biggest you've seen in terms of the crowds? A huge Oh, absolutely. Here. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I've turned away 70-plus people for this entries because we, we're not allowed to accommodate. We, we've extended. We've got special permission to take 150. 50. And I still had to turn 70 away. But just a few years back, I would have begged and bullied people to get 70, and I've been very happy with getting 70 riders. Well, 150 now, here, right there? 150, yeah. Maximum you're allowed is 120 in any time trial. Mm. Then you ask special permission, and it's normally national championships or, or very high profile events that are granted 150. And we asked at last minute as well, and we got it. And uh, just as well, because, you know. And, and there must be a couple of thousand people watching as well here well, I, I just walked down there to the commentator to pass some information up to him and as far as I can see there, there's people two and three deep on this hill I mean it's just absolutely incredible so you have worked also very closely in his career with Bradley Wiggins as the other writer you're closely associated with do you think David might set a precedent here and Bradley might finish his career here as well that'd be nice wouldn't it you were working excellent. on that already I'll tell you what as a Scotsman you'll like this one Chris Hoy has mentioned to me he'd like to have a go whether I'll get him here but he's mentioned it and I've got him on the hook so well, red, red wine is clearly which is the key with <laughs> Miller so maybe you can uh, you can wear that with Belgian beer or something I think Wiggins. you know certainly um, having Dave here has raised the profile of the event without a doubt there's also a, lo a lot of new people to cycling that have heard about it and they've come along so I think what having Dave here has done apart from it being you know his platform to say goodbye is it's made awareness to people that it is a good event and maybe it's taken us over that pinnacle that we've been trying to achieve for so many years that I won't have to go bullying people to ride anymore um, hopefully maybe but next year is supposed to be my last year of organising I've been trying to tell the club for two years when, it's 30, when I've done 30 years, that's it. But we can't find it. No one wants to take it on. So I'm a bit... Uh, you might have to carry on. So, I don't know. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? If you put it in footballing terms, this is like a club man, you know, a Sunday pub footballer being able to line up 
with Wayne Rooney. Mm. And I have to say that because I like Man U. But, you know, that's the equivalent. So for all these people, they don't, a lot of these people don't get this close to a star of their sport. So it's great to see them come and enjoy themselves in that way. Mm. And it was the same when Brad came. You know, a lot of people came, not as big as this crowd, but a lot of people came just to uh, to see Brad. Mm. And there's one guy, he comes and talks to me every year. He's, yeah, when Ben, because Brad presented the trophy, and this guy, I've never, I've got that picture of Brad giving me the trophy on my fireplace. It's fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Gary. We can tell you're a Man United fan from your accent. <laughs> Fran Miller, sister Hello, of David, head of winning behaviours at Team Sky. Yeah. Try to say that with a straight face. No one can, don't worry. Uh, Fran, how does it feel to be here um, uh, witnessing your brother's last race after 17 years? Is it is it sunk in? Uh, not really, to be honest, but um, but it's quite nice to be stood in a freezing cold country road in England watching him do it because it um, sort of takes you right back to the beginning. Yeah, it certainly doesn't really... There aren't too many flashbacks with the last 17 years, are there? No, it's not massively glamorous here, which is probably probably suitable for David. How do you think David will cope, first of all, without being a professional rider? He's been a, a professional since the age of 19. Are you... Um, you know, he's, I know he's got lots of sort of exciting plans. I think you're involved in some of those plans for next year. But how do you think he'll adjust to life after cycling? Um, I was quite worried about it sort of the beginning of the year, just in terms of because I think it is a massive ad adaptation. And obviously, Steve Peters, who works with us, talks a lot about that transition from pro athlete back into normal human. Um, so I, David's going to become a normal human. <laughs> no, that's unlikely. But, you know, Dave, pedestrian. <laughs> um, no, so I think it, yeah, I was definitely worried, but I think he's he's put so much into the retirement year, you know, with the shoe project and all the various, you know, sort of interviews and everything else that he's done, that I think it's sunk in for him, which has been important. I think the fact that he didn't ride the tour was in some ways a positive thing because it made it come to life earlier. Um, and I think the fact that it's been a really tough last two months, you know, with the broken fingers and the broken ribs, and I just can see in the look in his eyes that he's had enough now, which um, which makes it easier to do this. And I think he'll make an easier transition now because he's not leaving something behind that he's, like, thinking, Wow, that's amazing. Why am I leaving? Mm. It's time to time to quit. <laughs> time to hang up the wheels. Yeah, definitely. As you reflect on David's career, it's been you know ups and downs. You've been with him uh, very closely a lot of the way. You managed him in his early years as a you did a good job of that, didn't I? <laughs> how, how would you sum how would you sum up his his career? How do you uh, think how do you think he'll be remembered? Wow. Well, he always says he just wants to be remembered as a brilliant bike racer. Um, and I don't know actually how he'll be remembered. I think it's he's he's been a part of the sport for such a long time in this country, but he's also been a part of the sport when great, big, huge national icons have come through the system with your Bradley Wigginses and Mark Cavendish and Chris Froome. So um, I think he'll just be happy if he is remembered. Um, and I'd like to think he'd be remembered as someone who gave it his all and did his best and, and came back after what was a very difficult period in his life and I think did himself proud in, the, in that sort of latter bit of his career. Come on, Dave! Yes, Dave! Come across Finlay Pretzel here. Finlay, you're here filming David as part of your year-long David Miller project. How's it coming along, the film? Well, it's great. It's kind of coming to an end. We've shot some great pro races, all the rest of it, and this is this is him on his last race, an amateur race. It's coming. He's coming home. So and, is the uh, film ready to go? When are we going to see it? <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh, it's going to be a while, Later. definitely. It's going to. It's yeah. Watch this space. We're going to follow him into retirement now, and, uh, yeah. It's I mean, you were following him all throughout his last season, pr primarily, and it was an up-and-down year. He missed the Tour de France, obviously. Has that become part of the story, the, the disappointments along the way this year? Yeah, absolutely. It's like a big part of his whole career and him kind of coming to an end. And, yeah, absolutely, it's, it's a huge part of the film now. And it's an unexpected twist. It's, we we never really planned it, but it's no, it's it's good for us. So it's gonna be a bit a film, a little bit about adjusting to to retirement as well, in a way. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I think it's too good an opportunity to to say no to it and not to, you know, he's he's gonna retire and we, why not? Why wouldn't we want to? follow him into that because I've never seen that before as, as well so, so yeah, you're, you're being vague about the time uh, but give us g give us an idea give us a ballpark give us a year a year 
Yeah. A year from now, I would say. Right. So that's 2015. Yes. The film will be out in 2015. <laughs> that's the gate. That's the goal. And you're still looking for money. Absolutely. If yeah. anyone's listening. If anyone's listening, yeah, of course we're still looking for money and we're doing it by this kind of private investment and you can be involved and be very involved with the film and get regular updates. So how do people find out, find out more about that? We're on Facebook and Twitter, David Miller Film, and the website is davidmillerfilm.com. Thank you, Finlay. Thank you, Richard. So we're at the top of the climb here, waiting for David to finish the back hill climb. Here he comes. So, David, was that as horrible as it looked? Yeah, it was. Well, kind of as horrible as I expected it to be, so... Thank you. But, yeah, it was good. I wasn't, didn't feel as bad as I thought I might. And you took it quite seriously. I mean, there wasn't just... You weren't just turning out and riding up the hill there. You, seemed, you went and warmed up and stuff. Yeah, no, I wanted to okay, give it a decent showing, even if I hadn't ridden much recently. But, yeah, so it was good. So is it sunk in? That's your final race? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> sunk in the last couple of weeks. You've, you've had time to get to, to get used to it, but was this was did this feel like the right thing to do, the, the right way to oh, sort of buy it? Definitely now I'm here, it feels even now I made the right decision. The vibe's great, and there was a guy from High Wycombe, I think it's Scott Patterson, who was down at the start, who was there in 1992 when I turned up for my first time trial. So that's quite quite romantic in a way that he was just, he was, I didn't even know he was here turned up to rolled up to the start and he was there and I saw him in August 1992 I think when I turned up totally yeah, clueless you completed the circle there I completed the circle and you were, you were quite emotional at the Vuelta obviously does this feel quite emotional as well no it's just bad I got it all out there this has been nice this has been a real kind of opportunity to just like yeah really on my own terms I suffered so much that last week of the Vuelta kind of gone a bit too deep and how are the fingers they're buckled <laughs> so the next thing for you is to get get an operation thing on your hand isn't yeah it? i gotta get a finger pinned and all my ligaments and they're all still swollen the whole right hand is buckled so and then what next david uh moving house this week uh then to start the new life which involves i don't know working hard at something else i guess and you're looking forward to that? I'm really looking forward to that. I really am. So, yeah. Great. Time's well, good luck. I think everyone enjoyed seeing you ride here. Thank you, RBM. Yeah, it's been lovely to be here. Great. Cheers, David. Right, see so we heard there finally from David Miller after his final race as a professional bike rider. Uh, he finished 21st eventually in the Beck Hill Climb. It was won by Jack Pooler, who's a bit of a specialist at this sort of event. So David Miller bows out there with 21st place. You've been listening to a shortened telegraph cycling podcast we heard it earlier from gary beckett the event organizer fran miller um, from team sky who is also david's sister uh, finley pretzel who is making the film the david miller project and finally we heard from david miller i hope you've enjoyed this special telegraph cycling podcast the telegraph cycling podcast subscribe on itunes listen on audio boo visit us at thecyclingpodcast.com